What's up guys, it's your boy Swoos here and today I'm talking about something a little sensitive, a little touchy, uh, definitely some somber news. If you don't know, uh, I'm actually watching his final game right now on ESPN as, as uh, I'm recording this video, but uh, on Sunday, uh, January 26th, uh, Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California. I assume everyone knows by now, it's arguably uh, the biggest, uh, most tr not most tragic, but you know what I mean, like the biggest death, probably in the world in a very long time, maybe, you know, maybe since like Michael Jackson even, uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are mourning his death, a lot of people have talked about his past and how it hasn't been so clean, um, I'm here to talk about a different perspective, um, and that is the fact that his death was totally avoidable, um, not just because he took a helicopter. People are saying, oh, he could have taken, a, he could have taken a limo, could have taken a car. Like you don't have to get in a helicopter. Forget that part. He's gonna get in a helicopter regardless. But the helicopter uh, crash itself was totally avoidable uh, if the pilot has had simply done his job. Now, um, I'm not too big into uh, f into flight terminology. Uh, I'm not too well informed on flight in general, but I have done a little bit of research. Um, I have used my common sense as well. Um, I've watched other people's videos on YouTube to kind of formulate uh, what is a really uh, sensical opinion. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will share this sentiment as well over the, over time. Um, keep in mind, the actual crash report won't be released probably for about another year or so. So we can only speculate as to what happened until then. But um, moving into my theory, I guess not my theory, but um, there, it's called CFIT. It's it's a controlled flight into terrain. Um, basically, the pilot has full control of the helicopter, as we assume he had mo control of the helicopter. You know, didn't know where he, didn't couldn't see where he was going because it was so foggy, and ended up hitting the uh, the hillside, the mountain. Uh, that's basically what it was. That just means there's no mechanical issues that were related to it. I don't believe that there were any mechanical issues related to the helicopter crash. I think it was just simply the pilot um, losing his sense of direction. Um, and unfortunately, it's a cause of death. People, now, the way the, I said people. Why did I say people? That's just a random place to say that. But um, if you watch the flight path and you listen to the transmissions on the radio that's online as well, um, he was flying uh, basically through from southeast LA all the way up towards Thousand Oaks. And at one point, he was held in the same position for 15 minutes. That can really uh, get you antsy as a pilot and the passengers as well. And considering you have Kobe Bryant as a passenger... Uh, you definitely want to get there and not disappoint him. So there's this there's this uh, phenomenon from pilots known as get there itis. It's just you get antsy. You want to get to your destination as quick as possible for you, and so you don't disappoint your passengers. Uh, there's speculation that that might have been an issue for him. Um, certainly his fault. You shouldn't have ever have get there itis. It shouldn't. It should never be a thing. Um, unfortunately, it, a lot of pilots suffer from it. But essentially, he was following uh, the highway. I think it was the 101. He was meant to follow that all the way up between the valley. That's typically how a lot of pilots tend to travel when uh, when flight conditions aren't great. He was also traveling uh, in what was it called VFR, I believe, if visual flight rules. Um, basically, that means that you're just you're using your eyes to look for objects outside the cockpit. Um, whereas IFR is when you're relying on the helicopter's instruments, the vehicle's instruments, to guide you to safety. The, the, the helicopter will, you know, the instruments will tell you where things are, and it will guide you. It's almost like an autopilot in a way. Um, although not really. I don't want to say that for sure. I'm not positive. Uh, my terminology isn't great once again. But that's, where, that's what I'm led to believe. Um, and he was using VFR when he should have been using IFR because the conditions were so bad. Uh, there's this thing called VFR into IMC. IMC is essentially uh, really bad conditions for flying. You know, a lot of fog, bad weather, rain, clouds everywhere. And basically what happened was he was flying. I, he lost his route because it was so foggy. He went right past the highway towards the mountains. He wasn't high enough to where he could communicate with the 
uh, the air traffic controllers. He wasn't super low, not super low as in too low to the ground, but he wasn't high enough to be able to communicate with them. So they lost signal with him, with the pilot, that is. And he just kept flying, flying, and the cloud deck was below where the mountains were. So, you know, he didn't know where the top of the mountain was. He must have thought he was high enough to get over the mountains. He didn't have a sense of direction. He didn't know where the mountains were. He saw it too late. Then he tried to spike up in elevation and speed real quick to try and either scale above the mountain there's rumors that he tried to pull 180 to turn away but he but based on what we you know from the track of the helicopter he sharply rose in both speed and elevation presumably to try and get on top of the mountain before time ran out but unfortunately uh he didn't have enough time and the helicopter crashed into the mountainside um some experts said that based on the um debris the debris path the debris uh overall i guess on the landscape showed uh very well that this was probably um the pilot's fault for you know not really listening to his better will his better judgment uh and grounding the flight uh there you know lapd had their choppers grounded uh the flight and conditions weren't great clearly although could he have made it yes uh, it was just a very unfortunate event, and rest in peace to Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, which is it's just terrible, um, and then there were other families that were involved as well. There was a, a husband who was a baseball coach, his wife, and his daughter as well. There was another coach, then there was, I believe, a mother and a daughter as well, and the pilot. There were nine people total. I don't know if that adds up to nine, but that's how many I believe were on the plane. Uh, it's a really sad event, and you know, prayers up to everybody. Uh, it's really unfortunate we lost one of our greats today, um, or yesterday I should say, we lost one of our greats in Kobe Bryant, but, you know, that's the risk you take when you fly, so, it's just unfortunate, it shouldn't ever happen, you know, whether or not it'll end up being the pilot's fault, we don't know, uh, maybe it was a mechanical failure, but there were interviews, things had gone out saying it was otherwise, it was just a very bad situation, um, uh, sorry to end it on such a somber note, but um, that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, or not enjoyed, but uh, are more informed, more well informed on what happened. I tried my best to give you as accurate information as possible. Um, if you want to let your friends know what's going on, because they don't know too much about it, share this video with them. Or if I said something wrong, please critique me in the comment section so I can learn as well. I'm, I'm learning just as much as you are. Uh, because I am interested in what happened, because I do want to know. Um, but anyways, that's it for me. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe if you're new, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.